we were a little bit naive on the night. I mean, we gave up two goals off of our attacking corner kicks that turned into transitions uh, where the ball breaks out. We have opportunity to foul and end the play and get everybody behind the ball. And <clears throat> we naively just try to defend it, uh, which is nice and it's honest and all that stuff, but that's not what tonight is about or any other game. You foul the foul the proposition, it's in your half of the field, you get behind the ball and you live to fight another day. And instead we we allow them to break out. Uh, we don't deal with the play and that happens twice. Uh, the other goals, that gets us, the other goals off of another a set piece. Um, so I think, you know, we get ourselves down 2-0 in a, in a game that you, you know, you must win. Uh, means you're battling hard just to get back into the game to give yourselves a chance. I give the guys credit. We They battled back, um, got ourselves back into it. Um, yeah, but we couldn't survive the naive plays tonight, and we couldn't survive the naive sort of plays over the course of the season that cost us goals, and uh, it becomes you know, one point. You can go through the course of the season and think of the, the plays that could have been the difference in the end after 34 games and all the plays that you have over the course of 90 minutes for 34 games plus stoppage time and everything else. You can think of all the moments where could have been, should have been, but at the end of it all, we didn't, we didn't do enough. Um, I appreciate the guys' effort. They battled and they fought, but that's at the end of the day, you have to, we have to defend better. We have to defend our goal. We have to execute, and we scored three goals. I mean, it's, you, you score three goals, you got to win games, and uh, we didn't, and that's a, that's a problem. That's why we're here. And can you talk us through the, just the last final minutes of that? When did you guys realize that RSL had, had scored and, and what was sort of the reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, there was a there was a stretch. We were still pressing. I mean, we felt like it was important to win the game. It's you know, like, as I said, the, for the last couple of days in MLS, you never know what's going to happen down to the down the stretch and you're pressing to win the game, but you also don't want to expose yourself to lose the game. And so it was trying to find that balance within our group. Um, and then we found out right about the start of stoppage time for us, I think, that uh, that the the scenario had switched. So then trying to get that message on the field to throw caution to the wind and try to get the ball forward. I think we still had, ended up having a couple of decent looks even in that stretch and stoppage time, but obviously not enough to to get what we needed. Um, but that's about when we when we found it out. We had some we had messaging coming down, you know, and so we were obviously in a good spot until where we were in a playoff spot until then. So thanks, Greg. Mm -hmm. Next we'll go to Kevin Baxter. Hey, Greg, thanks again for your time. Mm -hmm. Kind of following up on Josh's question, um, you know, there, there's a missed penalty kick. You look like you're going to get the draw. That's going to be enough to get you in. And then you find out that, no, it's not enough. Um, what, what were those those minutes like? Um, you, you know, you went sort of from one high to one low. And, and you've never been, you weren't below the playoff line all season until stoppage time. Yeah, you know, I think... <clears throat> I, I almost blew my lid when we gave up the penalty kick because that was, again, another self-inflicted wound that was just completely unnecessary. And uh, and we were fortunate that he misses it, which gives us a lifeline. Um, yeah, and then, you know, as, as you said, during that little stretch of time from when that happened to stoppage, we were still trying to figure our, a way to get a goal, but without exposing ourselves to keep us in it. Um, yeah, and obviously we, we couldn't get the goal when we found out it was it was another like kind of an oh crap moment. Here we go. We've got to throw caution to the wind. We got to get the ball forward. We got to get everybody on the same page because it wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't much before that when I was telling them just right to to control themselves a little bit and to to play smart to not give away another goal, but but. Uh, um, but to still play forward, still try to execute, still try to get the next goal, but without doing silly things. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of emotions down the end, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of shifts, and you're trying to uh, give the group the right information. They're emotionally invested and exhausted in some ways and trying to push through whatever they have. So it, it just becomes one of those moments where, again, as you said, we we're in a playoff spot the entire season. We spent five minutes of the season not in the playoffs, and, and now we're out, and that's... Uh, you know, that comes down to, again, execution over 34 games. Um, and a follow up, this, this is probably a really dumb question, but, you know, it wasn't until that Rusnik goal that you really know that you needed to 
win. I know you wanted to win, but a tie would have got you. Yeah. Do, do you almost wish he was scored in the first minute so you knew for 90 minutes what you needed to do? Well, you know, I think the group had the had the sense all game that we were playing to win. I mean, you could see that we at times we were a little exposed. We were a little over ambitious. I thought Jules was pushing forward and getting high too soon, too early. Obviously, that's in an attempt to try to get into attacking position to try to create goal scoring chances, things like that. So. Little things I, I thought through the course of the game exposed us because we were probably pushing at times naively, as I said, too hard to go get, to get the win, and then we expose ourselves on the other side. So I, I think for you know 89 and a half minutes or so, the group was trying to figure out how to win the game, and then the last five minutes it just became a, an all-out assault and trying to get things forward and try to put anything in front of the goal and get it. So um, it, it was. It was more an emotional kick in the gut to find to to find out that they had scored the goal that was going to make the difference and be so late. But I think the intention the whole game was to was to you know to find a way to to win because that was the way only way we controlled our fate uh, and controlled our destiny on our own. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time this season. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot to Damian Calhoun. Hey Greg, um, as you look back at this season, what what have you learned about this group and how close do you think you are to getting it? shape and the way you want it uh, going forward here? Yeah, you know, uh, I think I I would probably be better and emotionally in a better position to answer that question in a couple days, you know, after a game. But uh, I think it was a, it was a season of, of meeting a bunch of new players, learning new players, adding guys along the way, trying to figure out, you know, when you – when you scout and you look for players and you put them on the field together, you have a vision for what you want things to look like and positions for guys to play and all that. But then you start to work with the personalities and work with the guys and you figure out, you know, Javi is, it has been more effective over the course of the season with a second forward near him, creating space and moving and he's, you know, things like that. So it's, it's been a learning process, both of, about them on the field at times, but also just on, uh, you know, handling these big moments, uh, handling the expectations of being with the Galaxy that come with that, and, and also for guys to learn our league and to understand, um, you know, how to get results in our league, but also how to, um, yeah, how each game matters, even in a playoff scenario, in a playoff environment where you don't really go get too heavy into the the feeling of the table till the end, but every every game, every point from the beginning to the middle to the end matters, and that, that's something that this group will learn for sure to the, today. In this moment right now, you learn that everything matters in this league, and and just because you're in a, a table or in a you know a playoff environment, there's ne there's never a moment that doesn't matter. So uh, I think this is a, this is an unfortunate lesson for this for all of us, uh, myself included. Um, this is an unfortunate lesson, but it's it's one that we have to take forward and and uh, and use to grow from. Thanks with Tom Goger. Hey Greg, thanks for taking this time. Um, oh. I guess just pretty bluntly looking back at the 34 games, you know, I know that you'll probably point to the standings, but do you feel like that this team deserved to make the playoffs? Do you feel that this team was a playoff team and was there anywhere that you could point specifically to, I guess, where it might have turned or where you were most disappointed that, you know, you didn't get more points in, in such a tight race? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think we had the capability to, to be a playoff team. Just we started well. Uh, we hit a little bit of a rut in the middle of the season uh, or towards the latter mid the two thirds part of the season, I think, where we went through a stretch where we don't get ourselves out of a funk of those nine games as quickly as we needed to. Um, you know, we lose Javi for about 12 games and he was on fire for us. That definitely, lost, we lost some momentum during that stretch, I thought, for a team that was able to bounce back and score goals on a consistent basis. I thought, um, you know, we lost some momentum. We're pretty, we're pretty young up top. When it's, you know, when a guy like Javi isn't isn't there, that that now we have guys who are integrating, learning our league, trying to grow as players, trying to do all these things. And I thought we lost a little bit of momentum in that stretch. Then, a young team together. We once we got into <clears throat> that poor momentum, we had a we had to find a, a way to get out of it sooner. And and it took us a little bit of while, a little while. And it, and I think it ultimately hurt us down the stretch. I, I'll be honest with you. When I looked at the schedule at the beginning of the year, I thought it was very important that we were in a, in the playoffs before we got to these last three games. Uh, these, 
to play Seattle on the road, play Kansas City on the road, and to play a team that I thought was going to be a playoff team at the beginning of the season like Minnesota because they're a very mature team that's been around and, and done well. Uh, I thought it was going to be important for us as a new group to try to be in this playoffs before this last three games. Um, having said that, we went to Seattle and, and played hard and could have taken more points. And then we're at home to finish the season with an opportunity, and I thought we had enough momentum, and I thought the emotion of the group was in a good enough place to get a result today. But just talking about the beginning of this the season when we were still looking at building a team and we didn't even know all the personalities that were going to fill our roster, I thought it was going to be important for us to be there, um, to be in that. Um, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, so I, I think <clears throat> I think we, we are, on our day, we are good enough. But the, the problem, I think, ultimately comes down to you, you can't give up three goals. You can't give up multiple goals over the course of the game. When we scored first, our record was very good. When we didn't score first, our record was poor. Uh, and too many games, um, we conceded the first goal, and sometimes we conceded two, three goals, which is difficult to to – um, sick, difficult to bounce back from that. We've got to improve defensively, and we've got to be be more consistent in terms of um, yeah. Just through the course of the season, we can't get into the the difficult moment that we did this year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our final question will go to Scott French. Hey, Greg. Um, obviously, a major disappointment, and today was a failure. When you look at the season as a whole, given everything that you had to do in building this team, given the the given where the team was when you took over. Yeah. Um, do you consider this season a failure, or is this season something else? Well, <clears throat> I think there's a couple ways. From, from the perspective of coming to the Galaxy and you, you, um, you always want to be and expect to be in your own way, and also for me it's – uh, there's only one solution, and that's to win. And so anytime you don't win, for me, it, it feels like failure. It doesn't matter if it's the first game of the year or the third game. I, I get gross anxiety when we lose. It, like, it drives me crazy. And so to not make the playoffs, is this is going to drive me crazy for uh, 10 months until we can – get back to the opportunity to be in the playoffs because this is this is for me it just it, it it's not who I am and it kills me uh, and and I'd say that for a lot of the guys but we're learning this in terms of the other side of the league I think <clears throat> I think we picked to be honest a really challenging year to try to rebuild a team that's the honest truth and we said that at the beginning when we when we started the project of rebuilding the group uh, the reason is, is from a scouting perspective at the beginning of the year, you don't have the opportunity to go and see players everywhere and meet with them. And for the six months before that, you don't really have that process in place because of the pandemic. So uh, we knew there was a little bit of risk to try to rebuild the roster going into a season like this. Second, the, it's delayed. And, you know, by the, the congestion of the roster and the way the national team windows are set up and all those things that that you're going to have – stops and starts through the season where it's going to have you're going to have less time on the training field more games back to back to back and so you're going to have a difficult time pulling a team together and getting guys here it was you know so I don't need to get into the details of that you guys know all the details but we picked a difficult year to try to rebuild a team we also picked a difficult year to try to to go young and to try to invest in our future by bringing in young players and developing them and bringing them along so that we have a sustainable success down the road and so um <clears throat> yeah, that ultimately some of that may be caught up with us in the end, but I, I think the investment is of our time and energy this season for where we're trying to go was is going to be worth it. I know it's hard for any of us to see that in this moment, but I, I really I do. I've seen growth in some of our players over the course of this season. They're getting more settled. They understand now what 34 games looks like in in, in MLS. Um, we'll be able to hit a, have a preseason together. We had. 10 or 11 players who weren't even a part of our preseason to prepare for this this season. So there's a, there's a lot of things that we put that were challenging for ourselves that I think will be more settled going into next year. But at the end of the day, Scott, you know you've known me long enough. When when this when we end like this, it's 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 not it's not good enough for me. It it, it will, and I'm sure for a lot of other people. Absolutely. Thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your time, Greg.